Hey guys, what's going on? My name is James Mason. In this video, I'm going to explain to you what the authorized shares, outstanding shares, and the float are. So, the authorized shares. This number is formed when the company is incorporated. So, when the company is incorporated, they establish this cap on the limit of shares that they could possibly use. Now, this number can be increased during an annual meeting of shareholders to vote for it to increase. So let's talk about the outstanding shares. Initially, this number is set by an investment banker during the IPO release. The IPO release is the initial public offering, but this number can change. And if you go back through financials of companies that have been around for a while and you look, you will see that these numbers have either went up or down. So the reason why these shares go up and down right here for outstanding shares is either if a company buys back their shares or if these shares are bought or issued to insiders of the company or shares used for acquisitions, you know, things such as that. Now, how do you get the float and why is the float different than the outstanding shares? So the float is the amount of shares which is actually available on the market to trade. How you figure up the difference between the float and the outstanding shares, you just add up all the restricted shares that all the insiders hold and you would find those numbers in their last set of financials. So you add all those numbers up and then subtract it from the outstanding shares and that's how you get the number for float. Now, those restricted shares, there's a time limit for when they can actually sell it. So, a lot of times it's actually a year, but it really just depends on the agreement for which they were issued to those insiders. So when you start hearing people talk about the float getting locked up, or when you start seeing the price of a stock start going up very fast. That means that less and less of these shares are available on the market. So it increases that price per share. And that's how you get the term float because the price will start going up. So I hope this video, even though it was pretty simple, I hope it helped you understand a little bit better what the authorized shares, the outstanding shares, and the float, and how to figure out the float means. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next video.